Back in the basement again today to give you guys an updated review on these rep urethane equalizers, which I've owned for just about a year now. And I've been getting a lot of questions on these recently. And I think part of the reason why is they're finally back in stock and they're all in stock, not just a plate here or there, because there's been trouble keeping them in stock for the past 18 months or so. So I had these for a year now. I want to give you my updated feedback. You might recall I did a first impressions video and truth be told, if you've seen that, a lot of the same points are gonna be brought up in this video because my opinion really hasn't changed on these. These could be some of the best plates you can get your hands on depending on what you're looking for. So I wanna give a shout out to my buddy Coop, my above basement dwelling brother in the garage. No one's perfect, but he also has a review on these that he did recently, which I agree with a lot of his main points again, which I actually said first in my video, Coop. I'm on to you, buddy. But check out his video, I'll link that in the description box below as well. Great source of information. You should be subscribed to him. Best reviewer on the tubes, in my opinion. So let's take a look at these rep urethane equalizers. They also have just kind of a cast iron version, but these are the upgraded big boys, the most expensive plates that rep sells. And for good reason, like I said, these are potentially some of the best plates you can get your hands on, depending on what you're looking for. So what I mean by that is these plates, as I said in my initial video, remind me of a style of plate that you would find at like a commercial gym. Now, that's not a knock by any means on the plates or on commercial gyms, but typically when you're in a commercial setting where lots of people are using the equipment, lots of people are also abusing the equipment, you want something that's gonna be nice and durable and it's gonna hold up to a beating, and that's where these urethane coated plates are really gonna shine. Again, they remind me of something that you would typically find in a nice higher end gym because of the construction of them, how they feel. Maybe if they had like a custom logo, that would be a little bit different, but Honestly, same type of quality that you'll find. So these are super high quality plates, but again, they're not cheap. They're the most expensive plates that rep sells within region. So if you're looking at urethane plates, especially ones here that have our coating and have this design that they have here with the hex design with the holes, you're looking for the 45 pound plates, roughly $2.61 per pound before shipping. So that's definitely up there. That's within the realm of getting calibrated plates, definitely some nice machine plates as well or if you don't really care about what your plates are, I don't know why you're watching this video, but you can get standard plates, which are just cast for much cheaper than that, around $1.50 a pound or so new. And of course, you can always get better deals in most scenarios on the used market. Prices have come back down during this COVID time. Uh, but if you're looking for super high quality plates, again, I think these would be something that you'd be interested in. I don't think they're probably the best plates if you're a power lifter or a strength athlete only. And I say that because these tend to be a little bit wider. These are about 1.8 inches width for the 45s, which isn't tremendously wide if you wanna compare this to some of the other bumper plates out there, which again, I probably wouldn't recommend for a strength specific training athlete. And they're not as wide as the Rogue Deep Dish 45s, which are almost a full two inches, but these still end up taking a good amount of real estate on the bar compared to a more traditional type of plate, which a lot of strength athletes like to use. Now with this too, even though they are urethane, they are durable, they're wide enough that if you're dropping them, they shouldn't actually cause that much sound because again, the material that they're made of and the actual width of the plate. I do find that these ones in particular have a little bit more play on the barbell itself. So they're a little bit loose. The nice thing is though, is even when you load these up and even if you do have some slop on the plate, so to say on the actual sleeve of the barbell, because of the material, the sound is definitely more muted than it would be if you were just using some loose cast iron plates. So if you're concerned about sound, these might be a good option for you. Now, me in particular, I've had plates like this design in the past. I've had the Rogue Six Shooters. I'm a big fan of the Ivanka Revolvers, which have actually seven holes on here. And I gotta say, out of the three, this design is my least favorite, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because this design I think is still very aesthetically pleasing. Some people like, you know, this honeycomb type design that it has. The reason I say that out of the three, this is my least favorite is only because the edges on here are actual corners, whereas with the Rogue plates or Ivanko plates, you're gonna actually have rounded holes on there, which makes gripping them a lot easier, especially if you have big hands. Now, surprisingly, Coop didn't call that out in his video, but for me, when I was in the garage gym previously and I didn't have as much equipment as I have down here in the basement now, I would use my Rogue Six Shooters to do some other work because it's simple to grip these and pick them up and you can do things like curls, tricep work, shoulder work with them very easily. With these ones from Rep, because of the angle and because of the size of my hands, it's actually a little bit uncomfortable. So just take that into consideration if you're going to think about doing that. A nice thing, however, about these holes and Number one is they extend throughout the range of 45s, 35s, which 
might be the best plates ever again. So best plates ever in design and best plates ever because they offer 35s. Uh, but the honeycomb design extends to that and the 25s as well with the change plates being 10 fives and two and a halfs having a more standard design that you might be accustomed to is the fact that the holes are all large enough that if you wanted to get pretty freaky with these, and I had never thought about this until someone DM'd me and asked if they actually fit over a normal barbell sleeve, all three of those plates, 45s, 35s, and 25s. And I said, I would test it out, but why do you want to know that? And that person mentioned that they actually like to load plates up like this on a barbell to kind of almost and mimic a tsunami bar or something like that where the weights are going to be moving a little bit. So that could be a plus side of this. And again, because this is urethane versus maybe a cast iron or machined iron, it's not going to beat up the plate and it's not going to beat up the actual sleeve of your barbell more than another plate would. So that is a potential pro for this. Uh, in terms of everything else on here, they are pretty accurate. They list actually 3%, which isn't the best. I mean, most machine plates, which are going to be cheaper than this, are going to be within 2% calibrated plates, which are within a lot of the same price range for some of these, is going to be within like 10 grams in most cases. So these are listed as plus or minus 3%. To be honest, all of mine are extremely accurate anyways. But again, when you're dealing with something that has that tolerance, it's for a reason. It's really kind of hit or miss what you're going to get. And I was extremely lucky in all of my plates, which I got, which is a lot of plates. I have 730 pounds worth of these plates. So I have six pairs of 45s, a pair of 35s, a pair of 25s, two pairs of tens, two pairs of fives, and two pairs of two and a half. Altogether, MSRP on that amount of weight, 730 pounds, is right under two grand, which to me is like my cutoff number. That's like what I paid for calibrated plates before a full set. So while these are expensive, again, if you're looking for super nice plates, that may be in line with what you're looking for. Now, one of the things that's really nice about these, however, is since I first got these, and I think these plates were actually the first plate to come out of their new Pennsylvania Distribution Center, which wasn't open at the time when I did that first impressions video. It was like the first test run of these. If you're on the East Coast, shipping is now a lot more affordable. In fact, I just put all of these in my cart again, number one, to remember what I paid for it, but also number two, to see how much shipping would be. And it's actually $187 to ship 730 pounds worth of weights, which is an extremely good deal, not only in today's post-COVID world, but pre-COVID as well. $187 for freight shipping on that many weights is extremely good, especially if you recall from my original video, these showed up in something that looked like it came out of Indiana Jones and the Lost Ark. So really cool about that if you're interested. I would probably take a look at these and the steel ones as well if you're interested in this design, only because the steel ones are gonna save you some money. The downside to going to the steel route if you really like this design though, however, is that black paint they use for it. I have seen it chip off with other people. So over time, again, because the tolerance on the plates and the sleeves are a little loose, you are probably gonna get more noise with the steel and you are probably gonna get more damage to the overall aesthetics of the plate. Whereas these urethane plates a year later, still look brand new. Now, one of the questions I've also been getting from people, especially people that have been buying these recently, is how do these look? Is there any damage to the ones you got? And across all of my, I think, 14 total plates that I got or so, no, I got a lot more than that because I got several pairs of them. Uh, but across all the plates that I have of these, I really didn't have any damage. Again, I covered this in my initial video. You know, there was a couple of things where the seams were hanging off just a little bit, but overall, all the paint's on really good. All the seams are pretty clean for the most part. The one thing I will say is that when I did first get these, they were covered in a light film of like oil. And I made the mistake of putting them all down on my stall mats before I had all this other equipment come in where I could store them on the rack storage like they're on now. And that film kind of transferred to my stall mats. And it took probably a couple of months for me to be able to really get that off. Uh, so just take that again into consideration. If you're getting these, I might want to wipe them down or not put them face down on a stall mat or any surface initially until they're cleaned up a little bit. But overall, if you're interested in a high quality urethane type plate, I think this is a really good option to go with. Again, for people that predominantly train for powerlifting like me, I don't think a plate like this with this thickness at this cost and the accuracy that is listed of a plus or minus 3% is probably going to sway me over some of the other options I have here in the gym, but it's a great option to have if you're interested in something like this for a unique design for nice plates that are gonna last a real long time. Now, if I didn't answer any of your questions in my initial video, which I'll link in the description box below, along with Coop's review and my now updated video that I've given you my feedback on these with after a year, make sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get to your comment and question as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching and stay big.